So yesterday in uh, Greg Thane's presentation, he said something I found interesting, where people have problems. And today I'm going to talk about what those problems look like in a cultural institution's digitization workflow and how we've set up HD Condor to help us solve them. My name is David Lamarche, and I'm the HD Condor administrator for the digital collections team at Bibliothèque et Archives Nationale du Québec. Now, what's that, you might ask? Bibliothèque et Archives Nationale du Québec, or its short name, BNQ, is a major cultural institution for the province of Quebec in Canada. It is composed of three distinct institutions. In very, very broad strokes, some of the missions of these institutions are, first, the National Library. Under the law known as legal deposit, all publishers in Quebec must give two copies of their works to the National Library anything that's published, no matter if it's a book, a newspaper, anything. On top of that, the National Library seeks to add to its, uh, to its collections all materials relevant to Quebec that's published outside the province. Second, the National Archives house 67 linear kilometers of documents. For those of you who don't speak archivist, let's roughly say linear kilometers is the measurement unit for all the boxes containing documents put end to end. Those documents come from pretty much all spheres of society in Quebec, government, courts, civil archives, such as records from notaries and civil status registers, which are highly popular amongst genealogists preparing family trees. And finally, private archives donated by individuals, families, and organizations. Last but not least, the Grande Bibliothèque is the main public library in Montreal, where, at least before the pandemic, it could count on over 6,000 visitors per day. You can imagine the result is a colossal amount of materials, ranging from the discovery of the Americas to the very and the very beginnings of the colony to whatever is being written in the newspapers this week. And that's a challenge. Take this document here, for example, related to the sale of land way back in 1703. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Gotta love the purple colors, it gives it character, no? Yeah, that's actually mold. Not all documents make it through the centuries unscathed. Some documents have had a rough life before coming into our care. Luckily, we have experts in our vaults taking care of the documents. Restoring them, keeping them safe is an art in itself. And the less we manipulate the documents, the less chance there is of it sustaining damage. But we also want to make it available to the public. You can see why digitization is an appealing answer to these two challenges. But we also need to get it right the first time and make sure we make a digital copy that captures all the details of the original documents in order for it to be an acceptable substitute to the original. It's a digital copy that must itself stand the test of time. That brings us to the team I'm a part of, the Digital Collections team. We're 10 people and we started using HD Condor back in 2013. We've been fans for a good while. Since then, our pool has grown to contain 50 employee workstations from four different teams for which we are very grateful. Since these are all workstations, cycle scavenging is our main way of obtaining resources for work. Even though HD Condor is aware of about 300 resources from these 50 workstations, we very, we very rarely have access to all of them at once, since, as you might expect, people use those, wor those workstations during office hours. Our best periods of productivity remain at night and weekends. On top of that, we have a single Unix server that pulls double duty as both our central controller and our web server for our HD Condor web tools. Overall, it's a small setup, but it's one that succeeded my wildest expectations. Here's what we do in the digital collections team. At the top left, there's the file producers, the digitization team and their scanners. Whether it's the in-house experts or partners outside BNQ, these teams digitize the documents according to certain guidelines. BNQ expects the digitized files to have certain characteristics, color profile, resolution, width, height of the image, and so on. This ensures that they produce the best quality file, which we call the preservation file, usually TIFF images, wave sound recordings, and MOV video recordings. We need to test these files to ensure they meet the high quality standards we expect of them. That's the first blue arrow, from the scanners to the preservation files box. That itself is thousands upon thousands of files being scanned manually every day. Those files are far too large to be available on our web platform. So the digital collections team needs to prepare dissemination files that are more appropriate. And the web platform has its own requirements. Thumbnails need to have certain dimensions. 
Audio and video recordings need to be in specific formats with specific bit rates. We also try to add value to image files by doing optical character recognition on printed documents. Most likely one day, we'll hope to do it on handwritten documents as well. So the text can then be indexed on our web platform and increases chances that researchers, historians, and the public at large can find what they're looking for. So all the blue arrows you see on screen is where HD Condor comes in. Through it, we do both our file analysis for quality control and our file conversions for the web platform and our text recognition. That's a wide range of tasks to accomplish. Generally speaking, these are the tools the HD Condor jobs will use. Jove is the GStore Harvard object validation environment, which is maintained by the Open Preservation Foundation. Droid stands for the Digital Record Object Identification and is an application provided by the British National Archives. For a conversion, we use ImageMagic, GhostScript, FFmpeg, which are all well-known conversion tools. And for optical character recognition, we use the Tesseract open source text recognition engine. That's a wide array of tools, but since we already know what we want from these tools, and we know the requirements of both our quality control and our dissemination file on the web platform, we don't actually want to offer the full configuration options of these tools to HD Condor users. Nor do I want them to have to configure HD Condor submit files either. I want things to be as simple as possible for them. You'd be surprised how often previous conversion tools we've used had too many options to configure. What with each tool having a different user interface and configuration options for just about any situation. So people would forget to click a checkbox somewhere or set a resolution or something. These operations are my colleagues' daily normal routine tasks for everyday use. They don't tend to vary at all. So a unified single place to launch them from would be a blessing. So how simple have we made submitting jobs to HD Condor? Well, this is our current submission form for image conversion. It's actually even our most complicated form with a grand total of five fields to fill in. From top to bottom, you've got the name of the project, the network folder path where your input files are, the network folder path where you want your output files to be created, a selection list with our common operations, such as thumbnails for newspapers or creating JPEGs from archive documents. And finally, a filter for file extensions, just in case your input folder has some other files mixed in. Most of our forms don't even have these last two fields and just an input and output folders. Once you hit that blue launch button at the bottom, the web server will build an inventory of files that are in your input folder, build the appropriate HD Condor submit file for your project, and that submit file will have a queue statement reading from the input inventory list. The web server then keeps track of running jobs so the users can check what HD Condor is working on with this dashboard. You've got the information you'd expect from that kind of screen. What are the jobs that are running? Which ones haven't started yet, if any? The columns from left to right are the owner of the job, the job name, the type of operation, when it's been submitted, the total number of files to process, and how far along the job is. So once the jobs are running in HD Condor, what's happening under the hood for each process? Well, each process spawned by HD Condor only has one input file to deal with. Let's see what happens to this one as it is turned into a black and white image in preparation for text recognition. And oh, oh no, something went wrong. Well, that can't be right. And yet the conversion tool's exit code is zero, indicating a success. The problem in this case is actually the input file. But the input file displays just file if I open it, just fine if I open it in a file viewer. This is the kind of problem we tend to encounter where file formats can be a bit more fragile than you'd expect. And when some files don't quite respect the published specifications for that file format, well, modern file viewers and converters, instead of reporting an error, they try to do their best and they try to figure out and show you something. And sometimes some tools get it right, and sometimes they don't, and another tool would get it right. Now that's a problem for us because we're trying to create stable, trustworthy files that, again, will last for decades. If already in 2021, different viewers and converters behave differently with incorrect files, how will they handle the image in the future? 
any digitized document that makes it to our long-term storage needs to follow the rules of how, say, a TIFF image needs to be built and structured. And we'll follow those rules to the letter. File formats are serious business. So we need safeguards. We did that by wrapping our file conversion operation in a Java application and having HT Condor launch that through the Java universe. The application's main objective is to validate the input file before launching the conversion tool and then validating the output file afterwards. These are the same validations we use in the file analysis for quality control, Jove, GoScript, etc. If they find anything unusual, there's simply no processing and the Java application exits. Now, the interesting part here that ties this back to HT Condor is that we found the exit codes to be a great way to communicate some information back to HT Condor. Since all the conversion tools are wrapped in this Java application, we have complete control over which exit codes to send back to HT Condor, regardless of the underlying tools. Then HT Condor logs the exit, the exit codes in the job history log. Here's a few examples of the custom exit codes the wrapper can use. There's error codes about invalid or missing files, but there's also additional information about successful tasks. For instance, if the output file already exists or if text recognition succeeded but found no text, it might be normal. Sometimes in books, there are simply white pages with no text. Since the HD Condor submit files are all built through the web server form, they've all added these exit codes to their on exit remove parameter to make sure HD Condor doesn't keep that process in the queue. So in the case of the mangled output file I showed earlier, the Java application would now detect the invalid input file and exit with code 1002, error invalid input file. Once the job is completed, the web server will then notice it's no longer in the HD Condor queue. It'll then automatically parse the job history log where the exit code 1002 is logged and build a short summary that's sent by email to the job owner telling them what's happened. In this case, for 13,000 files, six have been found to be somehow invalid and skipped processing. The owner can click the hyperlink to access the complete web report. In this report, he has the information that had been initially configured, where his input files are, where the output files were created. But just below that, there's a new section that tells the user exactly which input file is incorrect. The owner can then retrieve the input files in question, see if they can be fixed or salvaged. If they can't, he can try to go back to a previous version of the file if one can be found. He can even go back to the file producer and see if he can get a new copy of the file. And in some cases, possibly even get it digitized again. For us in the digital collections team, this is nothing short of amazing. Before using HT Condor, even just noticing that something's off with six files and turn in 13,000 would have been nigh impossible. It's a needle in a haystack. But not only do we now have a system that's easy to use and has great accuracy, it also allowed us to do more, just more of everything, more in a shorter time frame, And all of that using workstations we already had, and we can scale it by simply adding more workstations. Now, what more could we ask for? For the digital collections team, HT Condor changed everything. Tasks we used to complete in weeks or months of work now complete the same week or even overnight. Even after years of using HT Condor, I still have colleagues telling me how surprised they are that this job or that job is already completed. What does the future hold for HT Condor in our team? Well, we're always looking for ways to add values to our files. So hopefully in the future, we can tackle handwritten text recognition, maybe object recognition in photographs. As we revamp our long-term storage solution, we're also wondering how HD Condor can be a part of that. HD Condor has become nothing less than a central pillar of our team. So on behalf of the digital collections team at Bibliothèque et Archives Nationales du Québec, I want to thank the HD Condor developers for their amazing work that's making HD Condor what it is. Thank you everyone for listening and let's see if anyone has questions.